The U.S. Senate has approved a $95 billion aid package, more of half, more than half of which would go to Ukraine. The funding is aimed at helping Kyiv restock defences as it enters its third year of war. The package also includes military support for Israel and for Taiwan, a strategic ally. The bill will now proceed to the Republican-led House of Representatives. Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson says the House will reject it. U.S. President Joe Biden has put out a statement urging the House of Representatives to move with urgency on the aid bill. Here's the president speaking on Tuesday. There's no question that the Senate bill was put on the floor in the House of Representatives. It would pass. It would pass. And the speaker knows that. So I call on the speaker to let the full House speak its mind and not allow a minority of most extreme voices in the House to block this bill even from being voted on, even from being voted on. This is a critical act for the House to move. It needs to move. The bill provides urgent funding for Ukraine so it can keep defending itself against Putin's vicious, vicious onslaught. All right, for more on this, we're going to cross to Washington, D.C. and bring in our correspondent there, Benjamin Alvarez Gruber. Benjamin, give us a breakdown of what's in this bill. So 60 billion U.S. dollars, about two-thirds of this aid package, would go to supporting Ukraine, a money that is intended for rearming itself through the purchase of weapons, munitions, but also different support services, military trainings, intelligence sharing. Then we have 14 billion that will go to support Israel to boost its air defenses, the country's laser weapon system designed to intercept and destroy missiles, and this legislation. This is a huge package, also would include humanitarian assistance to provide food, water and shelter for civilians in Gaza and in the West Bank. And there's another part, and that's also very important, that has been uh, debated, is uh, what the U.S. would spend on U.S. allies in the Indo-Pacific, like Taiwan. Now, 22 Republicans voted in favour, three Democrats opposed it, but tell us what's behind this, this overall support for the bill in the Senate. Republican leader Mitch McConnell, who worked closely with Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, and he also praised this bill, knows that there is considerably pushback from the Republican side to continue funding uh, Ukraine. We have the House of Representatives that is controlled by the Republicans, so a Republican majority in House of the Representatives that has not passed major assistance for Ukraine since the Republicans took over the control of the chamber in January of 2023. McConnell knows that, and in a statement he also spoke directly to the opponents of his bill. Uh, he wrote, and I quote, history settles every account. He stressed that history will record that the Senate did not blink. So what they are trying to do and trying to sell this is that there is bipartisan support in the Senate, but now the important question is, of course, what will happen in the House of Representatives. The Republican House Speaker, Mike Johnson, has already said this bill won't pass the House of Representatives, hasn't he? Why not? That's right. And he said that they will not consider the legislation because it does not include a very important topic for them. And that is a border security and border security provisions. He already cast a doubt on this package on Monday evening in a statement. He said that the border of the United States needs to be secured before sending any type of additional foreign aid around the world. The position is not new because there was even a border proposal, a bipartisan border proposal that was presented by the Senate last week that included included both border and foreign aid, but that was also blocked by Republicans saying that it did not sufficiently address irregular border crossings. OK, so as you said, Speaker Johnson is linking this issue to the question of border control and migration. It's not been possible to get a compromise on that issue so far. Why is that? There has not been a compromise, and that's also what Democrats are thinking now. What can happen if uh, the Speaker of the House of Representatives actually does not want to put this set on the floor for a vote? There is a procedural maneuver that they could actually use. It's called a discharge petition that would allow the Democrats and the Republicans who support this bill uh, to force a floor vote in the House of uh, Representatives. But the question why there has not been any agreement on uh, border issues, I mean, this has been a very, very big uh, talking point for the campaign. Migration is probably one of the biggest topics uh, during this election year. 
We have on one side the Biden administration also acknowledging that there is a problem and they also said that they need changes need to be made. They said there is a crisis, called it a broken system. On the other side, we have Donald Trump who has been repeatedly using the word invasion. He's campaigning heavily on a border problem. So migration is definitely taking center stage. And when we think about why there has not been an agreement on Republicans and also on Democrats, we don't have to forget uh, that there are elections coming up and many of them are using that also as, as a point, as a political point to win uh, against their political um, adversaries on the other side of the aisle. We're going to take a quick listen to what the White House Press Secretary, Crean Jean-Pierre, said earlier. I mean, it is very confusing from what's coming from the Speaker. Very confusing. He's been very clear for years, even as recently as November, December. Uh, of last of last year saying how important it is to deal with the border we can come up with a bipartisan solution and all of a sudden he wants to uh, he wants to not move forward uh, with the border, as we know. And now we have a bipartisan support coming out of the Senate to move forward with an important package, a national security package, obviously, that doesn't include the border, and he doesn't want to move forward. Benjamin, is that the White House suggesting there that Republicans in the House are preventing a compromise on the southern border because Trump basically needs this as a, as a campaign issue? So there are many of the Republicans who are siding with Trump on a border provision saying that more needs to be done. But what we heard there is quite interesting because uh, the spokesperson of the White House also pressing and saying and putting a highlight that this was a bipartisan agreement from both Democrats and also from Republicans. The White House also slammed Republicans who attempted to impeach uh, the Secretary of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mayorkas, saying that they need to do their jobs instead of playing political games, though not addressing Trump directly that time but what is clear is that the Biden administration is going on the offensive now they have new talking points, not just when they want to talk about the border and that there needs to be a bipartisan agreement, but also uh, to press on the members of the House of Representatives to pass the supplemental bill. Uh, one of the other points that they also stress is that failing uh, to support uh, Ukraine, uh, fight this war against Russia, would also amount to support uh, for Russian President Vladimir Putin. So we have clear words from the White House telling the House of Representatives to put this vote on the floor. So that's directed to the Speaker of the House, but also to the other members to get this uh, bill through as soon as possible. And Benjamin, I did just want to ask you, the, the US envoy to NATO is saying he doesn't expect Ukraine to be offered membership this year. What has the Biden administration said on that issue? It's a long-standing uh, position that Kyiv will one day become a member of the U.S.-led military alliance, but there is no clear time frame, and that's also something that the Biden administration has stressed. They will look into it. These comments are now coming, of course, into other comments referring to what Donald Trump says, according to what he said with NATO, what he said with Russia, but the Biden administration still keeps talking with Ukraine, and what's important for them is not just to give them a look into the future, what will happen, but give them the support now, and that's also what they stress is important to get the supplemental with more military aid for Kyiv. DW's Benjamin Alvarez-Gruber reporting there from Washington. Benjamin, thanks so much.